online class, today I'm responding to the claim that the population of wolves must be kept under control. My opponent's secondary claims are the following. That the elk and deer population is decreasing, that wolves are a risk to livestock, and that wolves are a danger to humans. I wanted to clarify two terms that I'm going to be using, which is apex carnivore, it's, which is an animal that sits on top of the food chain, and they have no natural predators, so in this case it's the wolf and habituated, which is the process of wolves becoming accustomed to human interaction, whether humans feed them or humans call them when they see them in nature. My response to the secondary claim is that, or the first claim, is that wolves are not the only cause for elk and deer population to be decreasing. First and foremost, my advocate contradicted himself by admitting that deer and elk having to hide from wolves is a natural part of life. In his contradiction, he produced a counter argument that he himself agreed with that the population of these animals decreasing due to being hunted by wolves is a natural part of life, which weakened his ethos. In a study done on the effects of wolves on the animal feeding chain, bio biologist Douglas W. Smith concluded based on his own field experiences that there is no way of proving the extent of a particular animal's effect on the surrounding ecosystem, especially in large areas where wolves, prey, and plants are all tangled together. Based on this field study, the argument from cause is not supported because there is no proven scientific connection that the wolves are the only predators causing the decline in deer and elk specifically. Furthermore, he presented evidence from a Washington film and game ranger testimonial saying that elk populations went down from 900 to 147, mostly due to predation, specifically wolves in his argument. However, that was a testimony looking at the timeline during the 1990s and is significantly outdated. In a report published for the years 2015 to 2017 by the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife, they study that deer have more than wolves to worry about. Their predators include cougars, black bears, grizzly bears, coyotes, bobcats, and lynxes. The report even researched that gray wolves only began uh, recolonizing Washington during the mid-2000s and had its first documented wolf pack just in 2008. Therefore, the decline in deer and elk in Washington was more than the gray wolf. These two pieces of updated evidence matter due to them being the most recent information illustrating the changed deer and wolf relationship, as well as showing a more expanded view of the food chain and not just wolf versus deer. My response to the secondary claim is that wolves are not the only risk that livestock has. First, there was an event in Idaho used as evidence that took place in 2013 where 175 sheep were left dead after a pack of wolves attacked. A 2014 National Geographic article showed uh, reported on the findings of a peer-reviewed uh, scientific journal um, showed that the farmer's solution used to kill wolves in order to save their livestock showed that when a wolf was killed, um, the chances of livestock getting killed actually increased, specifically 4% for sheep. The more the wolves get killed, the more they attack. This statistic was not mentioned in the claim showing how the evidence lacked a well-rounded, more recent assessment <coughs> of the relationship wolves and livestock have. This is important because in order to save livestock, farmers need to take the first step and stop forcing the wolves to kill their livestock. How does killing wolves lead to more livestock death? It has to do with pack behavior. So when the alpha male or the female is killed, the uh, disrupts the pack's ability to reproduce, which causes them to split up and then having them hunt more, even more to be able to survive in their own packs that they need. Killing wolves is counterproductive for farmers who want to save their livestock. Additionally, in this claim, there was only one supportive evidence that stated that wolves cannot thrive where livestock thrive as well, and instead disrupts the animals and farmers completely without giving any substantial scientific examples. In the same National Geographic article, Suzanne Stone, which, who is the senior uh, Northwest representative for an environmental group, demonstrated how in the same state where the sheep incident occurred, sheep and wolves can coexist without causing an influx of more deaths due to killings. In an Idaho ranch, there are 30,000 sheep being protected without the need to kill the wolves. Using methods like bright lights and moving pieces of fabric, in seven years, less than 30 sheep had been killed by wolves and zero wolves had been killed. This matters because the original claim was an inductive reasoning generalization and took an insufficient number of cases to support a conclusion that livestock and wolves cannot coexist and is not representative of their relationship. My final response to his claim is that wolves are not significant, uh, wolves are not a significant threat on humans. Finally, the ending claim was that they actually are a threat. This claim does not have enough grounds for authenticity and there are insufficient signs to reach this conclusion. The Western Wildlife Outreach page for wolf safety reports that in North America, where there are about 60,000 wolves, 
there has only been two fatalities apparently caused by wolves, uh, where the wolves were believed to be sick or habituated. And the California Department of Fish and Wildlife reported that in the Rocky Mountains and Great Lakes region, where there are over 4,500 uh, wolves, there have been no reported attacks on humans. And in Alaska and Canada combined, there are more than 60,000 wolves, where there have only been two confirmed killings. Lastly, the claim is an appeal to fear by using encounters to demonstrate the supposed significant numbers of the dangers of wolves. In fact, the Western Wildlife Outreach also reported that up to 20 deaths occur each year and 4.7 million bites occur, but not due to wolves, due to domesticated dogs. In conclusion, the speaker's claim of fact did not have sufficient evidence, scientific evidence, and more relevant and recent information to support his claim that the wolf population affects deer and elk population, livestock, and poses a threat to humans, therefore not supporting why the wolf population should be controlled. What are you guys all shopping for your draft choices for debates? Is that it? You know? Yeah, I'll put that one on the top of my list and that kind of thing. Okay, well, that, that's perfectly fine. Uh, as long as you can recognize arguments. Uh, that, that sounds good. Uh, Stephanie, I thought you did an excellent job identifying what the claims were. Signposting them could be a little bit sharper as you get through it, because I do know that you uh, just kind of respond to, you know, like my second claim is, when you really are ro rotating to the second argument that was developed that you'd already previewed. Other than that, that's a minor consideration. Other than that, everything I thought was really sharp. You had a lot of evidence that uh, responded to those particular claims. You had updated information on the first point, uh, which diminishes the importance of the data that the advocate was using on that first point. Um, you had authorities that you cited in different places. I was a little iffy on that uh, notion. I'm still maybe a little bit iffy on the notion that because there's a statistical correlation between killing wolves and an increase in attacks on uh, the sheep that the farmers should refrain from killing the wolves. And the explanation that you give about the alpha males uh, suggesting that, they're, it, that it kind of alters the pack behavior, that helps a little bit. Um, but it's, it, I, I gotta be honest with you, it sounds to me like you know, the, when the mafia says, why don't you just go ahead and pay us? so that uh, we don't have to burn your place down because that's easier and you know when you don't pay us then that forces us to act in a, 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 a I'm going yeah I'm not sure you know it just it feels a, a little bit iffy on that argument I, I, I see the argument I see the evidence I'm not necessarily persuaded and convinced on that uh, on the other points though I thought that you did an excellent job and uh, like I said you had good evidence that you found to respond to those points that was very effective all right thank you